How to scratch build this in scale trackside industry on Ron's trains and things right now. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and today I'm bringing you part two of my scratch building project for the Big Build Contest version two, sponsored by Eric Hall and his YouTube channel, I Am R R O Com. You really should check out Eric's channel. I know that you'll enjoy it, and I'll post a link to it at the end of this video so you can take a look. In part one of this series, I introduced you to Baron Brothers Farm and Garden in Bowie, Texas. You'll remember that I'm building a truncated version of this rail-served industry, and today you'll watch me build that industry from start to finish. I hope that you enjoy it, and please, if you have any comments or questions, post them down at the bottom of the page. I love to hear from you, and I will always read your comments, and I will always respond. Well, that's enough talk. Let's get started scratch building Baron Brothers Farm and Garden. The first step in this project is to cut the foundation walls and to build the foundation for the main warehouse and dock. The foundation and dock are three feet tall, so I cut strips of 40,000 styrene, three scale feet wide, and then cut them to length for each side of the dock. Once I had them all cut, I put them in my gluing jig so that I would keep my corners nice and square and glued them together. But this assembly was pretty delicate so I got some scraps of styrene and cut nice right corners in them and used them to brace all of the corners of the walls for the foundation. After that, I used the foundation walls uh, to trace out the floor that I would cut to go into this foundation. I set the floor inside of the foundation walls because putting it on top of the foundation walls would have left a seam all the way around the building that I thought would be difficult to hide. By setting it inside of the foundation walls, the only place I would have a visible seam would be on the top edge of the dock, and I thought that that would be easy enough to hide, so I decided to go that route. I sanded all of these uh, walls, especially those that would show along the front edge of the dock very well, and also the corners, and then I used this Model Master putty to fill the seam in the top edge of the dock that would be visible. I love this particular material. It's very easy to spread. I'm doing it here with the back of a number 17 hobby, hobby knife, and then it feathers and sands down really, really well when it's hard. Here I am cutting the end walls for the main warehouse. The end walls are 24 feet wide. Uh, the side walls for the warehouse are 15 feet high, but the gable on these end walls is 22 feet high uh, because there's a 712 pitch to the roof. I uh, mark carefully exactly the pitch that I want on the roof uh, for the two ends. It's important to get that pitch right, but the most important thing is to compare the two ends to one another so that they match. Uh, even if the pitch isn't perfect, as long as they match one another, everything is going to fit and it's going to work together very well. Next, I cut the side walls for the main warehouse. Again, they are 15 feet tall and the main warehouse is 48 feet long in total. I cut all of these walls for the main warehouse out of 40,000 styrene that is uh, corrugated metal and with a, with a 30 thousandths spacing between the corrugations. Here I am marking and cutting the freight doors in the main warehouse. There are three of these, one in the end of the building that unloads onto a ramp, uh, one in the front that unloads onto the dock, and then of course a boxcar unloading door in the rear. Uh, in each of these cases I drilled out the corners of, of these door openings so I could get nice clean cuts in the corners and then cleaned the corners up, made them nice and square with a square file, and then straightened and smoothed all of the edges with the sanding sticks. Now, one difference between this warehouse and the prototype is the fact that the prototype uh, did not have a door of this type in the back for unloading boxcars. It had a ground level door and uh, that was unloaded with a forklift. You saw just a second ago me using a sanding block to sand down that, that red putty and feather that out. And then it was time to start assembling the walls of the main warehouse. I did this in two sections. 
first to make sure I got nice square corners on those. I braced them with uh, square strap, uh, scraps of styrene and then assembled the two sets together into the full uh, out exterior walls of the warehouse. Here I am using a piece of sandpaper to sand the top edges of the side walls to make an angle that matches the, the pitch of the, uh, of the roof. And then I cut the, the uh, styrene for the roof. Uh, here I'm using 40,000 styrene metal siding with 80,000 spacing between the corrugations. More of a standing seam type of a siding as the, uh, the original uh, building had. I sand the top uh, edge of these roof sections uh, to an angle so that I get a nice tight fit. Now, the roof is one of those things you want to get right on a building like this. You want the corrugations to match on each side as they come to uh, as they come to the uh, uh, the top of the roof, and you want to make sure that all of the angles fit nice and and tight. Uh, when you're looking down on a roof, as you are in most cases with a model railroad, anything that's not fitting perfectly on the roof will uh, will show up. As you saw, I used a piece of painter's tape to hold the roof together as I tacked it, and then when I was satisfied with its fit, I went ahead and glued it together and glued it to the sides of the building. I cut the walls for the 16 by 10 foot office from the same styrene siding that I used for the roof. The office has a much flatter pitched roof, only a 212 pitch. Uh, there are also two windows and a walkout door in uh, the office, and you will see that I, I marked and cut those, again, in much the same way as I did the uh, doors, the freight doors on the main office building. Drilled out all of these corners to make sure I got uh, nice clean cuts, and then uh, I will go back and clean those up again with my square file and with sanding sticks. Once all the window and door openings were straight and smooth, I trimmed them with scale lumber that is approximately 2 by 4 in, in, in scale. Uh, I, I installed this lumber with uh, CA, gluing it directly into the window sills, and then it was time to go back to the gluing jig to assemble the office walls, making sure everything was nice and square. This is delicate work with such small pieces, so you have to be very, very careful to make sure everything gets square and yet uh, nothing gets popped out or broken as you're going. I put a foundation and floor under the office building using uh, 40 thousandths plain styrene and then also cut the roof panels using the same roofing material as I used on the main warehouse and uh, proceeded in much the same way. I used a scrap of 20,000 styrene to make the walkout door. And this is a double door, so you saw there I used a piece of, of uh, that scale lumber to make the post in between the, the two doors. Then cut the roof sections and assembled the roof in much the same way as I did on the main warehouse. used a piece of 12 by 12 scale lumber to cut a sill for the freight door and installed it using CA as I had done the other trim for the other doors. All of the freight doors, uh, the front and end freight doors are sliding doors. I used the same uh, same stock, siren stock as I used for the siding to cut those doors. And they are sliding doors so they run on tracks. I use a piece of plastruct, a plastic angle to model the tracks. I assembled the track to the door and then glued the door in place. The door that is on the dock, I'm modeling open so that I can put some details and some figures there and make this look like a very active building on my layout. The track side door is a roll-up door, which I modeled with a piece of styrene car siding glued to the inside of the door opening. 
Here I'm making the awning that hangs over the dock. It extends 10 feet out from the main warehouse building. It's supported at the dock's front edge by steel posts that hold up a sill underneath the, uh, the awning itself. I used more of that 12 by 12 wood stock, but once it's painted, you will never know the difference in N-scale. After I cut all those posts to length, I assembled the support posts to the sill uh, using wood glue and a piece of painter's tape to help hold everything in place until the glue dried. I cut the walls for the 16 by 24 foot warehouse addition from the same styrene stock that I used for the main warehouse. I cut uh, foundation and floor out of 40 thousandths plain styrene and used the same roof material as I used on all the rest of the structure. Again, using my gluing jig to make sure I got all the corners nice and square and true. And then assemble the floor and the roof. And I went ahead and added this addition to the main warehouse as it's all going to be paired, painted the same color. I thought it would be easier to airbrush it all at once. I airbrushed the main warehouse with reefer white. The foundation got aged concrete, but I thought the aged concrete was a, a little bit green, so I later came back and dusted it with a very light coat of, uh, of light gray. I hand painted all of the trim depot olive. This is very tedious work. I'm using a 5 aught brush. Uh, there was a lot of touch-up involved. The support posts uh, on the front of the dock got a coat of this olive green as well. I installed clear window glazing in the office windows. Uh, I cut a black backdrop out of poster board and put one inside of the office and also one inside of the main warehouse building so you wouldn't see the bare white walls. Finally, it was a time to assemble all of the parts together to the base using a combination of solvent cement and CA. And here is Baron Brothers Farm and Garden completely assembled. Still needs a bit of weathering and some details, but we'll cover that in the next installment of these videos. Well, I think this structure is going to be perfect for my layout, and I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. Watch the third installment of this series, where I'll do some final weathering and detail work to this structure. I'll give you an up-close, detailed look of the entire structure and its finished state, and I'll show you how it fits into my version of Bowie, Texas on my layout. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please click that thumbs up button right down below and let me know that you enjoyed it. Or better yet, subscribe and click on that little bell and you'll get notified every time I post new videos. And leave a comment or a question down at the bottom of the page. I always read your comments and I always respond. You can also take a look at the expanded description below this video where you'll find some more information about my layout, the Texas, Colorado, and Western, the Facebook page that I have dedicated to my layout, and also uh, about how you can support Ron's Trains and Things through my Patreon or PayPal.me accounts. Well, that's about it for today. Thanks for watching Ron's Trains and Things, and I look forward to seeing you next time.